The specialists are back and we're here with our deal or no deal island episode number five recap. Welcome everybody. Thank you all for hanging out. Um, I know it's a little bit later than what we scheduled, but we're here. We're ready to go and we're ready to break down another episode of this NBC. Are we calling it a hit show yet? Does it get classified as a hit show? I do not think it's a hit show. I don't think enough people are talking about it i don't know if the viewership is all that great um maybe it is and we don't know about it i'm not hearing enough buzz and we can look at the amount of views and listens that we are getting on our podcast aggressively lower yeah and compare that to even like the trust or the traders or some of these like offshoot shows that we're doing that aren't you know our main squeeze and survivor it doesn't seem to be performing as well i feel like even when we did surviving barstool that like probably was garnering more hype excitement and views at least on our channel and we didn't even like announce that we were doing that we just kind of did that out of nowhere mm -hmm. and um so i don't know how many people are are that interested in this show i gotta say i really like the show i just do i'm i unapologetically am having a great time with this and each week they're doing some sort of like twist or format break, um, sometimes multiple, and it doesn't feel like it's too much or that it's over the top. It feels like everything they're doing fits totally within the premise and realm of the show. And one thing that the producers have at their disposal clearly is if a character isn't bringing it or uh, you kind of want them gone, um, a personal offer. <laughs> you can give them a really shitty deal a really shitty deal. So now I'm against this theory. I love tracking like how, because I really like to think about this, how they can legally produce these games, especially the deal or no deal game at the end. And that deal that was made, what was it like 90? They gave her a $930,000 deal when she had three over 1.5 million. And one of them was 3 million. So yeah. it's like, it was and then they offered her so a the, personal deal of 40 grand to pretty much say, please don't get rid of Alyssa, Aaron, or Rob. <laughs> right. No, this is clear production interference, and I'm kind of here for it. Um, because it at least she has still has the choice. Mm -hmm. Um, but anything, any previous notion that we had about, mm -hmm. oh, there's an algorithm that's just gonna spit out a number based on the case values remaining. That is completely out the window. I was sitting there waiting for that deal, and I was like, "Oh, this is this deal is going to be over two million, um, and then you're going to have, you know, the, the three million dollar case is lingering. Like, if you have that, case, are my arms see through right now? What is going on? Yeah, what is this hologram will over here? Whoa! Anybody uh, who's <laughs> watching that, that was weird. Look at you can see through my shoulder. This is crazy. I don't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> Will is vanishing. We're living through the leftovers as, right now. Yeah, Goodbye, as, I, as I depart. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I don't even know what we're talking about. This is insane. Oh. <laughs> this is really insane. Uh, no, you. There's. they are clearly making these deals based on the person there looking at the cases remaining. Now, this doesn't mean what they said about... They, they probably still didn't know what was in her case. I will take them at their word for that. I will believe that at least. I hope that's still true. But they can make up whatever deal they want. And if anyone disagrees, this is your prime example here. This should have been a $2 million deal at least. And then you're sitting there, wow, do I want to take the deal, but I might have the $3 million case, or what do I do? So they just gave her an absolutely putrid deal and then said, hey, you take the deal, though. You get $40,000 to take home. And I like that. I like that they're when they add real money that's not towards like a group pot, because I don't care about the group pot. They're all going to split it, or it's going to change. When it's a personal thing, and it's you basically leaving the game, this is like what we saw in the trust, I do think it actually has some stakes. And this is way better than Alyssa climbing high to get $25,000. I didn't really care about that. Yeah. Uh, this actually made kind of sense. So. And I feel like with Miranda here, she could end up walking out of this game with the most money. Like, there's no doubt. There's no, there's no confirmation that just because you make it further in the game, you get more money. Now, I know that you get a reality, they have to pay you what, $2,500 an episode or something if you're on reality TV. That is true. That is a thing.
but however much, much, much though, especially for someone like Miranda or Alyssa or Aaron, like the only one there is getting... a SAG minimum because you're technically you have to get paid the SAG minimum, even though they're not in SAG because they're on a network that is doing that. So they have to get whatever the minimum is there per episode, but Boston yeah, and then it's not, and that. it's not very high that minimum. And yeah. then they also have like a, like a, basically like a expenses or like just living stipend that yeah. like, Hey, you leaving your job, how much does that cost you? And we're just going to like basically supplement whatever you're losing from coming on the show. Um, and that's just like your basic income that you'd get anyway. So you're not even looking at as like a added value for going on the show. But to your point, Phil, with the way that they keep building up this final case, maybe we've been too hard on the final case. And that I, I, I said multiple times, like, oh, I thought they were adding cases, plural. And each time you add a big case, you, you, you have all these like, like, hey, if you get a million dollar offer, plus you get like a two million dollar offer. Those are multiple you know, case that could be there. They're they're just building to this one case that's going to balloon up to like maybe four or five, six million dollars by the end of this thing. Um, but maybe that's then the starting point of where they work down from. And my arm is still dude. It's crazy. Again. We got Sarah Woodward over here. Who says beam me up, beam me up, Will. I mean, that yeah, is weird. My... Now your what? face is see through. I don't understand this. It has to be some sort of illusion because I'm not lighting at... illusion, man. The light is somehow getting in front of your face, but it's also behind you and it's making it look like you're seeing it's definitely behind me because you can see it behind. It's really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> what was I talking about? This is a big distraction. We were we were on oh, here's the thing, and, and I know where you're going there because you were about to help me out here. Um, and you were about to say my point. If every time that somebody made a deal, that became one of the cases up there, now, there you go, well, you're good. Now it becomes more of an incentive to stay in the game longer because now there's a $937,000 case. Now there's a $600,000 case or whatever it is. There's all of those. But because they're putting it all into one case, there is nothing in this game that says, oh, you made it to the final episode and you're the one playing the banker. You make the most money. This isn't like Survivor or the Traders where the longer you make it, if you're the winner at the end, you get the most money. That's not the case. So to get 40 grand to leave, you pretty much just got a really, really, really good deal. And you just got maybe like half of your year's salary to leave the island. And you got your 15 minutes of fame, sort of. She might not have been on screen for 15 minutes, but still. She wasn't on screen for 15 minutes. Um, that's not what I was going to say, but interesting take there for me McGee here. He says on, on uh, Rob has a podcast season two has their application out. The season two players will get a thousand to 1300 a week. So it's been renewed for season two. I mean, we're bearing the lead there. <laughs> I mean, Wait, now I'm confused. Is it really deal or no deal Island season? Who cares two? about their living stipend? I mean, the show's renewed for season two. Hell yeah. Is it? I'm not seeing this. Let's see. Do uh, no I don't know. Hey, if anyone out there is listening who's part of the production team on Deal or No Deal Island, um, give me a call. Hit me up. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a supervising producer on the challenge level. Challenges have been great. You probably don't even need my help. But uh, whoever was there, if they can't make it, uh, I'd come out and, and do the challenges. So just, just give me a call. Um, I'm here. I love this show. I really enjoy it. Yeah, and give give me a call. I'll be on it. I'll go be the guy. And then be Phil the will be on it, and I will yeah, not I'll be the Aaron the, of next. I will season. not rig the challenges against uh, for Phil. Yes, and I will be great. On I run it. I will be. Game. What's that? What's that asshole's name? Dalton. Oh no, it's Dawson. That's right. I could be. I could be the guy Boston Rob is talking about in that situation. You know, that'd be great. I don't think so. Back. You're not. You're not jacked enough. No. So what I'm saying with this yeah. final case is maybe they start with that number, then they kind of work it down from that. So your lowest, like instead of having one cent or one dollar, the lowest case is like forty thousand or twenty five thousand mm -hmm. or something like that, and and maybe it's fifty thousand, and then they just go up fifty to fifty five, sixty, and they like go really low for those. And then you have like eventually we get up to this like one big case, and maybe there's a million dollar case. Who knows? It is an NBC prime time network show. They definitely are able to to hunk out some uh, prize money. It's not like one of these cable shows that you know it's like $150,000 or $200,000 mm -hmm. so it's like they have the prize money fund ready to go I imagine yeah 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 I I do think that they do but I'm still just saying like 40 grand we could end up looking back on this and saying 
Miranda made the greatest deal out there because she might make more money than the people who finished second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Like it's crazy. Right. But we're pretty much in agreement that the producers of the show is like, let's buy her off the show. Absolutely. Let's give her There's a no really way she said no to that. Would she ever say no to that? No way. Would, would she ever accept the deal if this 40,000 wasn't included? I don't think Absolutely she would. Not. Absolutely deal. not. Absolutely not. Yeah. 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 That's a terrible, terrible deal. And yeah, I just think it's, it's, it's crazy that they pretty much had one phone call of here's your offer. Everybody says, don't do it. And then the banker calls back and is like, here's 40 grand. Please make sure Rob stays. Please make sure Alyssa stays. Those are no, their I, stars. I honestly don't think Rob was even in that much danger. It was pretty much she had said Alyssa. It was Alyssa, she, yeah. She exits the game and then says, I was going to vote out Alyssa. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, I know some people are like, once you're eliminated, you're not allowed to disrupt the game. We hear about that on Survivor at some points. I don't really mind that. Um, that's kind of always been like a survivor type of deal where it's like, you know, once you are voted out, you must leave the tribal council area immediately and you're not allowed to talk or say anything. We've kind of loosened that up. Now we give hugs. Now we mm -hmm, can, mm -hmm. hey, was that you? Yeah, that was me. Stuff like that. I don't really have a problem with this. I mean, we did surviving barstool coverage and the jury members were just like at the office, yeah. like working. So they would just go and talk to the jury members. Um, you know, I feel, I don't know if you've finished house of villains season one, but basically the jury moves back into the house for the last episode and they're just living with the jury members. There's no rule in reality TV that says you're not allowed to talk about the game once you're eliminated. So mm -hmm. I don't really care that this happened and it provided a nice little bit of drama. So I'm sure there are some people going, wow, that's unfair, but I don't really mind. It, it didn't bother me at all to be totally honest with you. Okay, me. good. Yeah, it did not bother me at all. Um, I was in for it. I really was. I thought it was a good idea. And like, you know, to have her say that, it adds more drama to the show. At the end of the day, this Deal or No Deal Island show is all about just making people not like each other, right? It's pitting each other against each other. That's what the whole point of the show is. So I don't have a problem with this. And it looks like, I just Googled this. It looks like Deal or No Deal, it, it's more of like UK, a BBC style has been renewed for season two. I don't believe that this has actually been renewed for season two yet. Oh, damn. All right. Well, well I'll still be waiting for the phone call. There you go. And like That's, I said, yeah, I'm ready to play. I'm ready. This will be my, this will be my reality TV show. I'll get to go play deal or no deal Island. I could see it. They need, they need star power. They you do. said that. Yeah. And here I am the star of all stars. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the challenge with Aaron sitting in his little throne? Becoming I love this. Rob. I absolutely love this. I thought this was great. Aaron disappears at the end of last episode. We're wondering where, where is he? Where'd he go? Um, I, I started the episode and I had did, I didn't watch the recap. I usually just hit like this, the skip yeah, recap I button too. because you know, we're, we're, we're specialists, Phil. We should remember everything that's happened. That was not the case because I start the episode. They're all like, where's Aaron? I'm like, uh Oh, did Aaron get like medevaced or something? Like, is he, is he gone? Like I didn't watch it. And then I started slowly. Like, oh wait. Yeah. They like told him he had to like stay at, at the temple at the end and he's not around. I'm like, okay, so something's up. Um, I thought it was really fun that he had his, it was weird. It was like this power position of a throne, but he was also locked in it and it was a bad thing. Um, so maybe there it's like, wait, is this good or bad? Who cares? It's fun. I don't need it to all make sense. Um, so much fun having Aaron in this power position. I guess my my only qualm here would be, and I can I can hear the network notes coming. Is like, all right, each challenge is about something, right? Like last challenge, it's all about bluffing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this challenge is all about persuasion. These two challenges are testing the exact same thing. And honestly, I would have said last week's challenge was more about persuasion that you need to persuade them to take the lower valued case and that this one is straight up lying. Just say yeah. it, just own it. Just be like, Hey, this challenge is about lying. Is Aaron lying, asked lying the trustworthy to guy to lie or not? And he's was voted the most trustworthy. So keep going with the trust thing. Cause that's why he was voted in there. It has nothing to do really with persuasion. It's literally, do you trust Aaron or do you not? Is he lying to you? Can you tell a lie? Which is, you know, again, very similar to last week, but I think persuasion 
is like you're trying to look at the case in a certain way. You're looking at both cases and both values from last week, and you're trying to persuade your opponent to take the lower value case. I think that lands a little bit better. But hey, again, I'm sure the network notes were were tricky on this. You can you can feel them oozing out of the show. Do you see but... what the name of the, each episode is too? It's interesting because it goes to your point. I've not, I've not looked at the name. So episode episode. one was, are you a gambler? And it's all about, you know, gambling to go get the case and all that. Episode two was, are you calculating? Uh, I forget exactly what episode two was. That was calculating was when they ran up the tree to get the arrows, I believe. Uh, Are you fearless? That was the one where they got dropped from the heights. Are you intuitive? That was the one about um, being able to bluff. And then this one was, are you trustworthy? So they're they're literally telling you what they want the challenges to be in the name of the episode. And like you're saying with the network notes and everything like that, I agree mm-hmm. with you. And I think it was as simple as we already know the name of our episodes. Like we, this is, or or maybe it was what challenge we're going to do because we're going to name the episode off of that. So let's make sure it's at least a different word that we can use even if we're faking it. Yeah, no, I, I can tell you exactly how this went. It was, okay, we want, and, and I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg here, but at some point, it was like, okay, let's let's just say I have before. We want to name our episodes, Are You Blank? And the whole point, the whole through line on our season is, are you able to like be a match for the banker? Mm-hmm. Um, are you a worthy enough adversary? And what are the traits that someone would need to have to be a worthy enough adversary? And they probably had some people write down 15 to 20 traits. And then it's like, all right, make sure they're different enough. And they sound, we can, you know, bullshit it in the host copy and we'll pick you know eight to ten of them that fit and then um i don't know if they that was like hey let's name our episode titles that if that came first or if that came later but either way that was like let's let's have that be a big theme of the show and that always sounds fun and good and i think look is it working sure it's working i don't know if it's like again i'm kind of calling bs on is this even persuasion this episode i think it's more lying and last week was more persuasion but i guess Mm. it it works to an extent. Um, but I think at some point, and this is a very seasoned one thing, at some point they're like, let's just do the best challenges. Like that will be the the thing. And these challenges have all been pretty good. And like, let's not pigeonhole ourselves into this really narrow scope of like, it has to be this specific trait and it has to work and be so literal. That's what all these shows really like to do, especially early in seasons. And then they realize like, okay, did that really land? Like who at mm. home is like really tracking like I've been watching, I don't even know the names of the episodes. I didn't even see the episode titles. I guess people who record on a DVR, you'll see those titles more. Um, but I think it's like, hey, we get what the banker wants. They want some risk-taking, lying motherfuckers, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for my swearing, but that's what they want. We don't need to pick out a trait each episode, um, even though so far, I like I like all these games. I really do. Yeah, they do. Uh, and so when you look at how this played out, and Aaron was the one who was there and he was the most trustworthy. And we see him telling lies to one of his closest allies. And then also somebody who he doesn't necessarily consider one of his closest allies. And we see him telling the truth to others. How did you think about the way this played out? And do you think that they were really lucky? It was Aaron and other people would have been a little bit more predictable. We see Amy not believe Aaron. And then Aaron ended up telling her the exact truth. So that was kind of fun. What did you think about how that all went down? I mean, Aaron is the perfect person for this, right? Yeah, I feel like it too. I mean, who else would you rather have had? I don't even think Rob would be as good. No, I agree. I think Rob, people would be able to see through it too easily. Yeah, I think Aaron's great. And the reason they did this, that's why they said, who's the most trustworthy, that that person you're putting in, you're putting everyone kind of in a pinch because it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, we all agree this person's the most trustworthy. Now I have to go trust them or do I trust them or do I not? Um, so that really, that really worked. And yet I keep saying trustworthy. They voted on trustworthiness is Aaron lying. Again, the persuasion part to me is the only kind of thing that didn't land. Not that I care that much. It's just that we're having a podcast and talking about it. Um, it didn't bother me all that much, even though I keep bringing it up, but this was, this was great. And I think this was great how Aaron had serious dilemmas, uh, in like decision-making here that this wasn't easy. And he came up with this strategy, which I think was pretty clever to give, tell one of my allies to get the key uh, and then tell one of my foes to get the other key. And that way I can just send that person to the bottom and I can trust that my ally is going to go get what I tell them to get. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to tell Amy, hey, 
go get me a key. And she's like, Aaron, I've been trying to go after Rob. I don't trust you. And she doesn't get it. And then you are screwed. So I think telling an ally, and then when Rob comes up, Rob plays this so well. He he's it's basically like, tell me what's going on. I don't care what's in my case. Tell me what I need to do. All this, and then Aaron explains the whole game. And for Rob to get that information and then to come back, I love this so much, man. When so he good. had his case and he sat on it, and he waited. He's like, I'm waiting for Miranda to come back. I need to talk to her. Brings over his like two person of his like this new fake alliance that he made. And is like trying to protect them. He's like, I don't know. I talked to Aaron. I just told me he told me to keep my case. He did such a good job of selling this. And then later, when we go down the line, Joe is asking everybody, okay, what did Aaron tell you? And Rob's just like, Yeah, Aaron told me I had a pretty good case. So I kept it and I ran away. I trusted him. He had nothing else. I didn't spend there for five minutes trying to figure out this entire game of the, the whole thing. And I love when you can do this in the middle of a challenge that you know, so many challenges in these shows. Um, and not to beat a dead horse, we talk about the traders all the time. It's like, oh, this cool action packed thing or stunty thing, they're swimming. Um, that's all fun and good, and it's good promo moments. But to have a side conversation of strategy out in the forest and in these briefcases, that's what this show has become. And I think that's what this show needs to be is the strategy during these challenges and be able to have private conversations like that um live during a thing where you are digging up you are climbing you are untying knots you're still getting the physicality of it all and again the briefcase again coming through a great prop you put these giant keys in there the briefcases are so apt for putting whatever you want inside them i just think these challenges are working so so well yeah and and with this the rob situation was just great and again it scratches that itch of like seeing Rob on Survivor, which always is a good time, whether you love Boston Rob or hate Boston Rob, he's always a good time on Survivor. He's never not delivered on a season, whether he goes home early or makes it very, very deep. And I think that's what's really fun about Rob. And for him to go over and start talking to her and buddy up and play it off as if he didn't really know what was in her case, but just being like, I think Aaron might be lying about some of this. And not say that he has all the information, but play dumb enough even he's though he's really so protecting dumb. himself, it's yeah. so well done to protect himself. Because like, Miranda worried, was not going to vote. For I'm him. worried he lied to me. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm worried he lied to one of you. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I I didn't get I didn't get great vibes from Aaron, even though yeah. he knows exactly all the rules. He knows what the plan is. I think real and Rob did. He did not have immunity these this episode whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But he goes into the temple not really at all in danger of going home either either miranda wins and sends Alyssa home or miranda loses and she goes home so rob was fine he played this brilliantly and this isn't some contrived made up thing i think a lot of these shows are trying to infuse strategy where there isn't any Mm -hmm. um and we do get a little bit of that with the whole being good at deal or no deal of it all that's where it's like it's it's all luck and again we've talked about that and it's fine um but this was a real strategic plan, not only from Rob, but from Aaron also. Um, the whole the whole deal, the whole dilemma. And then you had to get two people to do it. And then I also wonder why it was keys one and two. I was I was thinking through. I thought, hey, it'd be way more interesting if it was like three and nine or three and 11 or or something. And it didn't Maybe sound. Maybe it makes it harder to convince people because they're right next to each other and they're the first two numbers. Yeah, I think because it, it might sound a little shadier to be like, yeah, I, you need to get one and two. It just sounds like, really? Uh, those are the mm-hmm. highest value cases. Uh, there's that. And maybe it's just, you know, this is a network show and our audience here sometimes things need to be spoon fed and easy um but i'm curious not our audience here the audience not our audience here but the the general audience you know who isn't coming to listen to the specials break down the episode um i think it's really easy for the audience to be like okay one and two have the key those are those are the ones that aaron needs those players to get and those people will be on the bottom if you said three and eleven then he's calling out like oh get 14 and nine and people might lose track of that so that's probably it too but i I, I was like at least wondering what what's the deal with that. And I do think the one and two of it all too, when Miranda is there and Alyssa has already opened up case, I don't know, it was one or two. Let's say Alyssa opened up case one and you're sitting there with case two, you're Miranda and Aaron told you, hey, go get one or two. And you see that, you know, Alyssa's mm-hmm. already opened up a key. You're probably sitting there like, huh. I know exactly that this is a key because Aaron told me to get one. And or she two. did. And I think and that's I've already seen the other one open. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And I think that's why she felt hurt. And that's why when it did come down, like Aaron played, the one thing Aaron played totally wrong in this episode was when it was, well, who do you want to go home? He should have said somebody else because by him saying, you know, I forget who he said he wanted to go home. He wanted Stephanie to go home and he was clearly protecting Alyssa. You're telling the person that you just betrayed, please also protect Alyssa. And it's almost like he shouldn't have thrown out Stephanie's name. Maybe he even says, well, actually, I think it could be interesting if we try to blindside Alyssa here because he had immunity in that situation. And maybe that would have actually protected her because he's, you know, playing wishy-washy, double dipping or whatever you want to call it. That is a good thought that just tell your enemies what you don't want to have happen. And we'll tell them that you do want to have it happen, what you don't want to have happen. So tell uh, t- tell Miranda that, hey, I want Alyssa gone. And Miranda's be like, well, screw you. I'm not going to do your bidding. You just put me here. I'm going to send home someone else. I'm going to take out Stephanie. Yeah. Um, we kind of saw that with Rob, and it didn't really work. But Rob told Amy, uh, I believe, right? It was Amy in, in last episode? Yeah, it was. It's like, I put me up to play. No, or dealer, no, I want to play. I want the I want the the game in my hands, and I think Rob did generally want that. But there was a part of him, even in that confessional, was like, "Well, if I tell her what I want, is she really going to give it to me?" Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah that, that could be a way to to play this game. I do I do enjoy the format. I think the format's working. I think the format's working incredibly well. I think the problem, and we'll have to see how this game actually ends. But I do get concerned about the finale being a bit of a dud because you really are just watching somebody play Deal or No Deal. I'm and sure that's not the entire. I, no, but I'm saying like the end of the end end of the game, watching somebody play Deal or No Deal. I'm curious what cases they're going to put in there because, like you said, maybe it will be the lo- lowest one is forty thousand. So we're watching this person play for a life changing amount of money, no matter what. But if they do throw in some of those left side one penny, ten dollars, hundred dollars, it becomes like, well, what was the point of this person going so far in the game? Because I do actually feel like the structure of this game is great. And I think, Will, the reason this hasn't been renewed and the reason why this isn't doing better, because <clears throat> they're putting it on at 10 p.m. And I understand that's the last slot of prime time, but this to me is the type of show that needs to be on at eight for like the full family sit down, watch it aspect of it and maybe that means they need to change nights or something but to put this on at 10 is tough and it's hard to sell people on no you really got to watch this show and then also be like well what's gonna happen at the end and it's like i don't know maybe there's gonna be a penny in there maybe the person who walks out of here gets 25 dollars, and you're saying what did i just watch this entire season for what did i stay up till 11 o'clock at night on monday nights for if you're working a normal nine to five that's not fun yeah, that is odd because it is. It does feel like a family show. And here it was Survivor so much, and with Jeff, that kids love Survivor. And I think this is hitting that same kind of demographic, or at least it should be trying to go for that. Maybe it's a little bit more cerebral. You got a lot of numbers and a lot of briefcases, so maybe it's like slightly more adult. But like kids these days who have been growing up on iPads and you know Xbox and PlayStation and puzzles and games, like. Kids are more into games and in tune with numbers more than they ever have been um, yeah. just due to the amount of tech that they're introduced to so early on in their lives that I think, you know, a nine-year-old could watch this and, and fully grasp what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm with you. It's weird. And especially that it's not on Peacock until the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's fine. Maybe that doesn't matter as much. But, I mean, if you are a Gen Zer or even a millennial, like you probably don't even have cable. And so you're not watching this when it airs. You're like, okay, I'll check it out on Tuesday. And then I don't know. Then there's not like this unifying viewership that's all watching it together at the same time, which I think that's, hey, that's really tough to get to these days with any show. There's very few shows that can do that. But if it's on at eight for everybody and it drops at Peacock at eight and parents can watch it, kids can watch it, Friends can watch it. I mean, the more that you allow people to watch the show and the easier you make it, yeah. the better. The more people you're going to get to watch it. I mean, that's that's like how I feel like when we do this podcast. It's like, should we throw it out on Twitter at, at the same time? Because like Twitter views, if we get Twitter views, that gets us no YouTube views. Like those don't translate. So it's like you put it out on there. You put it out on Audio Boom, Spotify, iTunes. Like you put it on all these places. And it's like, okay, obviously there's going to be certain ones that are going to be more beneficial for you. Like YouTube for us is the one where we can get the bigger following, the biggest following, whatever. But you're also putting it out to as many places as you can 
because yeah, I mean, ultimately it's also you, eyeballs on it. So I don't get why NBC is not also or ears or ears. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, a big version of our show is just audio only, which is fine because it's like a po- it's a podcast, but we have the YouTube thing and it's both. It's probably like half and half. So yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah. weird. Yeah, it's weird. NBC's not doing that. Why not take advantage of the streamers? Why not do a podcast form of the show? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying with the streamers, like I'm agreeing <laughs> oh, yeah. with you because because the other thing is too. Are you more likely to have people who are going to stay up till 10 p.m. to watch this on NBC, or people who are going to stay up till 10 p.m. to watch this on Peacock? I feel like most of the people who are going to be staying up late on a Monday night to watch a reality TV show are probably a younger audience who is more willing to do it and they're not going to have cable which is exactly what you said but it's like so why not yeah it's it's the people it's the people that have peacock because they like the traders and, they and have why peacock. do you think okay so here's like, my question to you here's my question to you why do you think that the traders is peacock only but deal or no deal island is nbc then peacock wouldn't you think that if you're peacock only you're actually getting less views um, that, I know we are talking about the NBC family, but I mean, they are different and it's an umbrella, but they are different entities. So you have Peacock that is trying to do everything it can to garner enough subscribers to keep them afloat. They're losing money mm-hmm. and they, you know, at some point developed a show with a production company and clearly there's a big international pull with the traders since it kind of came out in a bunch of different countries at once. So they're like, okay, this is going to be our Peacock exclusive. And Deal or No Deal Island was probably developed, you know, in-house at NBC and with an, another production company through the NBC network, the, the broadcast network. And so they can they can decide if they want to go on Peacock at all. And I think for them, it's like, let's use P- Peacock as a vehicle to allow people to watch it so that we get renewed and get more eyeballs on it. They can't watch, like so many people don't have a cable box uh, and don't watch network TV live. So I could be completely wrong on all of this. There could be one decision maker that says, no, this is Peacock only. This one is NBC and Peacock. This one is on E. And then two months later, three months later, we're going to put it all on Peacock. This is going to be on Bravo. Um, and then this will go on Peacock. This won't. Maybe there is one kind of arbiter of all that, but I don't think that's really how it works. I think these shows are developed independently of each other. and there's so many parties that are involved. There's just, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as clear cut as like one person, at NBC, just like deciding. I think it, it goes through a lot of different kind of authorities. I don't know. That's just kind of my, sense. my guess. I could be completely wrong on that. Yeah. That makes sense though. I think what you're saying there definitely, definitely makes sense. And uh, Sarah Woodward says they definitely need to change nice to Friday. If it's on that late, plus a lot of other shows on at that time. Example, I was watching, I watch wrestling and I'm going, I'm going to finish watching that and watch this the next day. And even me, I have cable and I watch this the next day. I don't even like, I don't want to spend my 10 to 11 PM watching deal or no deal Island to be totally frank. Yeah, no, 10 PM is not a good time slot, especially for a show like deal or no deal Island that they promoted the hell out of like the marketing yeah. for the show is crazy. I mean, you would see it on billboards on buses and then all the, you know, the trailers on TV, like during football, um, it was all over the place. So yeah, I you think it would have gotten a better time slot, but maybe knowing that it was going to be on Peacock the next day, which they don't always do. That was like, Hey, we can kind of, we can kind of punt on the live viewership on the night it airs. And it's okay. If a lot of people go, go to Peacock and watch it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Just fun to have that conversation about this show because now we're episode five. Like, like you said, well, I think we've actually done better on the views on this almost across the board than we did on the trust, but it's not much better than on the trust. And I would have thought being that this is a survivor channel, primarily it's got Boston Rob. I thought that that would have been a bigger draw and we're both really enjoying this show, which with the trust, we were like very met on it. Like the we trust liked it, had we some really, really but high this is highs, really well done. I really like this show, Deal or No Deal Island. I'm in. Yeah, I, I'm. Curious I think. To- I think the weak, the weakest part is is the cast. I mean, there's still people we don't know. But now, like do you that feel girl like- Jordan who came up this episode? I was like, I thought Jordan and Miranda were the same person for the first like four weeks. Yeah. Now I know. Do you feel like at this point though? Now we have Rob, Aaron, Alyssa, Amy. What's his, What's that asshole's name? Oh, Dawson. Um, those I still are Dawson five. and 
Dixon. Nick, I don't feel like we Nick, know it all. Nick and Dawson, I can't tell them apart. Um, yeah. Like, even though I could tell, I, I can imagine they're two different faces right now. Like, one has, like, the goatee or, like, the facial hair. But, like, I can't tell them apart character-wise on, like, why they are distinct from each other. Yeah. They are the same player to me. Um, I mean, yeah, the, like, yeah, we know what. So, I'd say it's three people. Aaron, Alyssa, and Rob. And I, Amy, guess, I feel like I feel like Amy's jumped in. Stephanie, guess, they're trying to build we get up. Amy's, like, we get Amy's point. She's not a major character, but she's, you know, filling a narrative need of like, I don't trust them. I still mm-hmm. don't trust them. Screw they're she's kind of playing the role of the the loud opposition here to our to our heroes. What you need how many people are left like in the that game? What's that? Can you remember off the top of your head how many people are actually left in the game? I think I do because I think Joe said it. He said there's eight people left. There are eight left, yeah. So can we name them all? That's actually can we name them? So the two bros, Nick and Dawson, mm-hmm. Rob, Aaron, Alyssa are main three. And then Amy, Stephanie are the opposition. And I'm missing oh and Jordan. And Jordan, who you just remembered was a person. So yeah. I mean, you're right. I think that is the weakest part, but I would wonder how a season two of this would look. Obviously, the deal or no deal is what's keeping this from being Survivor-esque to Survivory, and I like at the end of a game where you just you can pick and say, I'm picking you. You're out. Goodbye. I like those elements, but I wonder if they would lean in a little bit more so that you could get some of the strategizing and scheming because they are spending very little time. They're starting to spend more time on it now. They spent so little time on that early on, and it has felt like they they almost don't trust their cast enough. I don't even know if the cast is weak or maybe it is weak and that's why they don't trust it, but it feels like they don't trust it because they're not, they are picking. These are the four people who are going to tell our story and that's it. Those are like, Amy is the only member of the opposition who's going to tell the story. Yeah. And it also comes down to like, you could, you know, edit the show to be even, but that's doesn't, that doesn't work. I think. And even with survivor, I think survivor learned that very early on in our, in our Patreon coverage, um, we're going through every season of Survivor. And we recently did some of the Marquesas conversations. Um, and and I, you look at you look at like Zoe on that season. She has eight confessionals the entire season. Five, actually. Like, I thought it was, it five? it was five. Yeah. She has five confessionals and she makes it like pretty far. And that's kind of insane. And people are like, oh, Russell Hans changed Survivor forever because he just – took all the screen time and confessionals away. And yeah, maybe that's true because it was like such a focus on one person as a, you know, post like three or four, but survivor has been not including people who didn't deliver. Yeah. They've been doing that since the very, very Season early four, days maybe. of the show. Yeah. So this isn't a new thing. And I think if people are like, Hey, Boston Rob's providing the best stuff. We're going to show the most Boston Rob. Jordan isn't doing anything. So mm-hmm. we're not going to even give her one confessional five episodes into the game. I mean, maybe she has one or two, but he doesn't important. feel like much. I honestly no. was in the same boat as you. Where I was like, oh, that's a nice player. No. Mm-hmm. Um, What else was I going to say? Oh, so Sarah Woodward says also based off the promotion that says they can win a life changing amount of money. The final deal or no deal is still going to be high amounts like 100K, et cetera. She doesn't think they're going to go super low on well, that. Well, you need to have you need to have some low cases so that there are like stakes to it. If you are guaranteed $100,000 once you start playing and the offer, I mean, and then you're going like up to like, you know, 1.5, I'd say it's like 4 million and they're kind of dispersed. It's like, okay. Your offer then isn't going to be that different from, I don't know, it could be like a difference of like $50,000, which is a lot of money. But like if you're comparing it, like if I have, if I take a $400,000 offer and my case had $450,000, like am I really, is, the, is that crushing? No, I just no, won $400,000. It's not, it's not but, but they you can't do, make it so low that it was a waste of everybody's time. No, it, exactly. It, it's a, it's definitely a balance there. They have to really, really hone that in. And then I also have to get lucky that the person doesn't pick like, you know, the 12, that like, let's say, let's say the lowest case is $10,000 and someone picks like the $20,000 case and they say no deal up until the end and they open their case and it's 20 grand then, but I don't know. We've seen with these deals that they can offer whatever they want. I think at that point, you want to give them a favorable deal so that your winner is walking away with a lot of money 
And then, hey, if they turn down, let's say you turn down like six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, because like you know the one point two five and the one point five are still up there, and then you get down to it and you only walk away with twenty thousand dollars. I know that's not a satisfying win, but that is like a big water cooler moment that whoever's mm-hmm. watching the show, oh my god, can you believe? that she turned down $650,000 and only ended up with 20,000. I mean, that's what made Deal or No Deal such a hit show to begin with yeah. was that you would talk about these deals that people would get greedy and they wouldn't accept the deal and then they walk away with, you know, like 10 bucks or 100 bucks or something. And that's part of the fun of the show. And obviously the game show version has the luxury of playing multiple rounds per episode. Um and you can see variance. Variance is completely fine. When it is the one winner winner of your season-long show, I am curious at how someone really miffing the deal or no deal portion and walking away with no money, how that might really feel unsatisfying. But that is kind of ingrained into what made this show great originally. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. And and I feel like, you know, you still got to have a water cooler moment. You got to have people who watch it, <laughs> but I do no, that's agree true. with you. That's true. I, just I do agree like, with you that it makes sense. It's like just... that. That's it, it's not the worst thing. And actually, I, I'm not saying it, that it's not the worst. Thing. I'm saying there's a there's a chance that you know someone walking away with ten grand or twenty grand at this whole season because they turned down a mega mega deal. That that there's a chance that's not as bad as we're making it out to be. That yeah. that that could, there could be a lot of fun in that and a lot of conversation and it's a big, you know, reality TV moment. Um, that Thomas know, McGee seen. says it would be more disappointing if Miranda walks away with more than the winner. And Flynn master says, looks like we will get a season two ratings on Peacock have been great. How do you know the ratings on Peacock have been great? Do we know this? They don't People usually have release. Been promoting. I know that they were promoting it, but then it's like how much of that is just being promoted and is authentic and how much is fake. It's kind of like that. But that Flynn, Ma- Flynn Masters, thank you for listening. Do we, get, is there actual data? Look like, are up. we seeing numbers? Because the thing with streaming services, and this is also was such a big, you know, issue of the strike. And again, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I, I, you know, read some stuff here or there, and I could be completely wrong. One of the issues on the strike, at least for scripted TV, was, you know, we want residual checks. That's how actors make their living in between gigs. So if you get on a show and it's they air it on TV, like if you're on a, a sitcom and TBS is rerunning it, you get paid for your likeness and being an actor uh, in that show. With the streamer, it's really hard because they aren't being aired. Like no one's putting on like how I met your mother, right? Uh, mm-hmm. The streamer is not airing it. It's someone choosing to click and watch it. And then these streamers, they're private companies that don't release their info. So if you were to pay residuals on something, you would be paying, you would have to basically release the streaming numbers to the public, uh, which streamers do not want to do because a lot of them aren't doing that well. So it is an issue of like getting the data of like how successful they are that the companies internally know. But uh, let's see, Flynn Masters, what does he say? He says something on Reddit saying like it has gotten 24 million viewers or so. One of NBC's best shows on Peacock. Wow. Our Our said 24 million. million. So I'm going to, let's Google this, 24 million. And I Google Peacock and right now the NFL announced that the Eagles versus Browns Friday night season opener will air exclusively on Peacock. If you don't hate the NFL yet, it's time to start hating the NFL pretty hard. Well, you're not allowed to tackle anyone anyone either, right? You can't Maybe. tackle. They just changed the rules for kickoffs again, which are stupid. And now you have Peacock exclusives. Now you have to pay to watch football. Like you have to pay additional on top of if you want to watch Red Zone, if you want to watch NFL Network, if you want to watch Sunday Ticket, if you want to watch even, you know, you got to pay for your regular CBS, NBC, all that. But now you can't just have a basic cable package to watch the NFL. Now you also have to do that. It's such bullshit, man. I hate the NFL so much. It's insane. Unreal. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have Peacock, though, so we're not because the traders. Yeah, so. but it's it's BS, man. It's stupid. You're, you've literally now gotten rid of any adult over 50 is not going to watch the NFL season opener. And, like, they're so greedy. It's insane. Mm-hmm. And the people who are going to say, well, it's just $5. Great. Then Peacock and NBC can pay it. <laughs> like, All right. So here we go. Here's here's. This is from The Wrap. Uh, the competition show hosted by Joe Manganiello. Is that how you Close say enough, Frank. Has grown from its average live plus same day linear viewership of 2.5 million total viewers to reach 4.6 million viewers when accounting for 
multi-platform viewing within a week of the viewing. Oh wait, but it said live plus same day. So that's that's actually live plus seven if they're going within a week. So usually you have live, then you can do live within same day. You can go live plus three, which is the three day. And then they're, they're using here the live plus seven days, which of course that's going to go up. So I don't even, that says that's an 83%. That's up 83%. But average live plus same day linear viewers up to 25 million total viewers to reach 4.6 million when accounting for multi-platform viewing within a week of the viewing. Okay, so maybe what it's saying is like originally it was 2.5 million for the episode. But now mm -hmm. that they're counting the week in Peacock and streaming, now it's up to 4.6 million, which, of course, when you account for more days and platforms. That yeah, and then when you up. count that over. So I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like a, that could just, this could be a, what's that? So then they're saying over the course of five episodes, it's 24 million combined. Right. And I think this was, they, when was this, when was this put out? March 22nd. So this was after only four episodes. So. You know, we're talking about six million viewers an episode, um, which isn't that crazy for a mm -hmm. uh, a show that's on primetime NBC Network and Peacock. But they are, you know, twenty four million sounds like a a big number, and you know the the uptick by eighty three percent. Yeah, when you include other viewing options. Anyway, I mean, I hope it's doing well. I'm not trying to. Yeah, like, I hope it too, gets a second season. I think that I would do be too. I would love it to get a second season. So um, that's it, though. We're wrapping. But it this debuted up. to three point one million. And 3 then one million is still actually a solid number. No, it's like, good. And then, Mars, and then like it's four point five, right? Like and then that's it's third episode was two point eight seven, uh, and then fourth episode two point eight eight. So pretty much stand stayed the same, which is actually pretty good if you can just maintain. Like if you maintain two point eight million viewers, two point nine million viewers that's live too that's probably live and um, yeah and like i said survivors 4.9 4.43 point 4.78 4.68 and it's in its 46th season and it's like a staple show it's not that far behind survivor in all honesty like that's not bad yeah no it's really not um so yeah we probably will get a second season which will be great i'll be podcasting it alone because we'll be working on it or there won't be a podcast on it because i'll be on it mm -hmm. i'm gonna be on it i'm gonna be the nfl hater on it I don't know. Maybe they won't put me on it now because I said bad things about the NFL going to Peacock. I don't know. I just think it's stupid. I think it's dumb to have exclusive games. But that's for a Phil and Will conference. They already did a playoff game exclusive on Peacock. That's way did more you... important than the opener. Oh, it was, and it was stupid. I didn't watch it. I didn't have Peacock yet. <laughs> I think I watched. But <laughs> you just go to a bar. Well, that was the nice night. thing about being – but it was so stupid because we're in Miami. I live in the Mi greater Miami area, so I had to pay for additional to watch a Miami – football playoff game come on that's like pay-per-view now that's just silly it's just silly it shouldn't be pay-per-view to watch the nfl well yeah it would be good if it was pay-per-view and then not having any ads but it's like you're paying and then you're also getting hit with ads the whole time so yeah, you're just like, watching commercials 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 and it's like right. thursday night football was amazon prime and i get used to have to pay for prime and all of that but it's like Prime also has the option to rent videos. It has the option to do other stuff. Like Peacock really is a streaming service. And now it's the season opener. There's a difference between the season opener and a playoff game and Thursday night football. There's a big difference between those things. Yeah. So anyway, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you're enjoying Deal or No Deal Island. And I uh, hope you enjoyed our episode five recap. I think there's only 10 episodes. I think we only have five episodes left in the season. Oh um, I think it ends before May. So hopefully you're all enjoying this. We'll be back again next Tuesday with more tomorrow. I think we are going to do a fill and will episode. I don't know. We'll talk about that after this. Uh, we'll figure that out. So if you're into that and obviously survivors tomorrow, so we'll be doing that. Thank you all so much for listening. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Think about becoming a patron. If you want to hear us talk about old school survivor, we're doing a whole bunch of that right now and we'll see you next time. See ya.